Hi everyone, I'm Georgie and I'm a trainee at Skybourne on CP4 and I've been training for um, seven months now on the EASA Integrated ATPR programme. Um, today I'm going to be speaking to Ian Cooper, the COO of Skybourne, um, for the Ask Skybourne video series. Um, Ian, thanks for joining me. Hi Georgie, good to see you. So I just want to start by like asking how Skyborne came up with the plan um, for continuing the ground school training during the lockdown. Yeah, sure. So obviously it wasn't um, wasn't anticipated. <laughs> came as um, a surprise to the whole uh, industry and world in general. Um, but uh, we were very you know quick to make sure we had a solution for all of our all of our customers, our cadets. So the content was already there because the the content is obviously already put together, delivered to the uh, cadets in the classroom. Um, and then, so then we had to decide on what platform to use. So we did a bit of due diligence, well, quite a lot of due diligence, looking at the best platform to use that was interactive, allowed to share whiteboards and so on. And uh, then we, so we chose upon Zoom. Um, we then had to train the staff, so all of the theoretical knowledge instructors on how to use it. Um, and then we ran a few tests and, um, you know, a few of us were sort of guinea pigs. I sat in on a few lessons as well. And we sort of critiqued the lessons to make sure they're paced well. That the right sort of delivery message was given and then um then we had to gain ca approval so the ca turned it around very quickly within 24 hours of submitting our proposal we were approved and then um and then the rest is history as they say we launched it and um you know there's been quite a few lessons learned as we've gone the key thing was the the pace because um unlike a classroom environment you don't get the natural cues for the body language from the cadets so it's more sterile i suppose um so that was different so it meant the, the the pace if you weren't aware of that could come across across quite quickly so the instructors were aware they had to slow things down a little bit and that's why we broke it up a bit more and had shorter lessons and made use of the uh, google classrooms technology the worksheets and so on so um so yeah that's in sort of general how we how we sort of went about it mm. how do you think the cadets have adjusted to the changes um, well, really well, um, without embarrassing you. I mean, I think um, the cadets have dealt with it extremely well. I always think about things through my sort of own experience of going through the cadet training 20 years ago and think, how would I have dealt with it? And I have to say, I probably wouldn't have dealt with it as well as you, as well as you all have. So, you know, it's um, it's really commendable the way you just all sort of got on with it. Um, and it really shows the resilience you all have. As, obviously, as you know, at Skyborne, when we do our selection, one of the key competencies we look for is um, around resilience. And then we look to develop that throughout the training. But I can safely say all of our cadets have showed really fantastic resilience and real professionalism and determination to get through this you know, challenging period. In the original plan, I normally would have been doing the basic flying training at the moment, um, but we obviously can't currently fly because of the lockdown um how is Scarborne planning to get back to flying once the restrictions lift so um we've been conducting an extensive um, risk analysis over the last few weeks looking at and identifying all the risks that are now associated with this new new world that we live in um and then working out how we can work with the the regulators and department of transport to put a plan together to make sure that um, we limit the risk um, so obviously that's our priority is the safety of our cadets and also our staff so we've now com completed that risk analysis um, and we believe it's safe um, to return to flying so now we're putting a return to flying program in place and we're going to take a sort of steady approach so bringing back a few courses initially um, limiting the amount of people in the training center to to start rolling out and trying to get back to as close as normal as we can the other consideration we also have is obviously the airport environment that's changed as well. They've um, all the air traffic controllers have been um, non-active during this period, so they've got to get back up to speed to make sure that they're all current again. So, you know, we can't run at this at 100% and expect to be operating at 100% back on day one that we return to flying. So we've got a nice steady plan, taking all of the um, risks um, into consideration, and, and there's a lot of new procedures that are, will be in place. So anyone now coming back into flight training will be fully briefed before they even step inside the building, just to know about the new procedures for being in the training centre, the new procedures for flying, and then the new procedures that we have in place for the accommodation, because uh, we've obviously had to think about that very extensively to ensure that we minimise the 
spreading of germs in that environment as well. So our living as a family concept is what we're what we're implementing. With the flying training, it was recently announced that it would now take place at Gloucester rather than Spain. Um, can you explain the reasons behind that move? Yeah, sure. So I'd say it's not really one single point that um, it sort of explains the whole reason. There's, there's several factors. Obviously, COVID-19 was one of the drivers. Um, the, the the landscape in Spain was looking very different. We were um, told very soon after that we um, that we temporarily closed the operation there and in the UK that the Spanish accommodation would be ready again till the end of the year because that whole resort had closed down. So we were going to have to do flight training in the UK anyway for a period. So then we started really looking at it, and there's there's been a few operational challenges in in the um, airport that we're operating from. Um, just things like availability and access to taxiways, restricted areas, and so on on the runway. So, um, and plus the fact on that timeline as well, we've now also got our new 88 bedroom accommodation block in Cheltenham opening soon. Um, and we thought we could actually offer a really good, um, actually better overall experience for our cadets by using all of the UK um, and, and maximizing the use of the training center there. Um, so that was really why the decision was made. It wasn't taken lightly, obviously, but the sort of the, the main driver was the student experience. So we didn't want them living in accommodation that wasn't suitable. Um, and then we had this brand new facility on our doorstep in Gloucester, where Cheltenham, that we thought we'd make use of and uh, and deliver the training on our, in our you know, in our training centre that you're familiar with. Um, a lot of the cadets are worried about their future for getting an airline job um, do you think airlines will be taking on younger pilots as well even though there are lots of older experienced pilots looking for jobs at the same time yeah i think there will be uh, still a need i mean it's obviously going to be a, a downturn in the whole industry as a whole but when it recovers um i think there's still a, a need for uh, cadet pilots because i mean diversity is a key word in in um in the pilot workforce in recruitment eyes because obviously you've got to plan your um plan your resource your crews for expansion and also the um the age demographic so that you don't have everyone retiring at the same point so other i mean obviously the cost point if you look at a cadet pilot going into an airline they're at a lower cost point generally than an experienced pilot um so i think you know the airlines will still have an appetite um for you know well-trained highly qualified, determined individuals that um, tick all of their sort of recruitment boxes and um, and also meet the sort of diversity requirements of the airline. So I definitely still think there'll be a need for cadets going forward. Cool, thanks. That's all my questions I had. Okay, thank you.